All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I would like to give all praise and glory unto Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shah, by Hashem, Kakodash. Double honors unto the apostles and the elders of GMS who rule well, teach well, being great examples to us younger brothers. And peace and blessings, salutations, and hope like out there pushing this word in truth and in sincerity across the four winds of the name of Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shah. Push them, get up out of here. Shalom on to the hopeful and the believers, the listeners who have came back to the obedience of the scriptures through faith in Yahweh by Shemal Shai. And um, what I want to get into, all right, today, you know, is um a lesson, you know, inspired by some precepts that was put, you know, on the live screen by the brother beyond Yashallah, you know, and I just want to. Expound on it, you know, because it links with a parable, you know, Yahweh Shai spoke on, all right, in uh, the book of Luke, the 18th chapter. So I want to get that parable, you know, by, all right, Yahweh Shai, you know, but I want to touch, you know, on, you know, um, those verses in the book of Sarah, you know, because this is a direct link, and we know Yahweh Shai, you know, is the volume of the book. You know, and a lot of things Yahweh Shah taught on, you know, was things that was, you know, what was being in the book of the Apocrypha. You know, certain things he said out of <clears throat> the book of Edris, you know, and there's certain things, you know, that he said just out of the volume of the book, you know, because all it was was the Old Testament. All right. When Yahweh Shah, you know, was teaching. So, all right, let's, um, let's get that what the brother was going into. Okay, in the book of um, Sirach, the 35th chapter. All right, so this is the book of Sirach, chapter 35. And I started at verse, um, I started at verse 14. It says, in effect, Yeah, I started at 14. It says, He would not despise the supplication of the fatherless, nor the widow, when she poured out her complaint. You know, and we're the widow that's pouring out our complaint. You know, because a widow will be someone, you know, that will be vulnerable. You know, the fatherless, they represent the, the vulnerable of a society. You know, because they've lost their hedge. You know, the husband and the father, which that's, you know, what the, what, what, um, the Heavenly Father was to us, you know, like into a hus husband and father dynamic, you know, to the nation of Israel, okay? And now we're in this vulnerable position, you know, under, you know, the foot, you know, of our enemies, okay? And we're complaining, you know, one thing about the hopeful elect, they will be in the mind mindset, you know, they will be in the state of continual complaint, you know, against this devil, man. Because ultimately, it's time to get out of here, man. You know, we don't have joy, all right, in, in arguing with you niggas back and forth, man. Okay? we, we That's that's not our, 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 our thing that we get off on, man. Okay? We sincerely want Esau Edom to be removed from power, man. Because, see, a nigga would just argue back and forth all day. That's the only thing niggas have mastered, okay, in, in, in nigga culture, okay, is, is to argue. Back and forth all day, man. Okay? Verse um 15 says, Do not the tears run down the widow's cheek. And is not her cry against him that causes them to fall. And who is that? Esau, Edom. You know, the state of vexation that we're in because of who's in power. Esau, Edom. You know? So when we make our cry through prayer, alright? It's against... The one that's causing, okay, the vexation, man, which is the rulership of Esau Edom, man. Okay? The so-called white man. Okay? Verse 16, it says, He that serveth the Lord shall be accepted with favor, and his prayer shall reach unto the clouds. And ultimately, you know, the clouds of those chariots, man, that take these prayers and present them before the throne of Yahweh Bashim al Shah. They're being presented to Yahweh Shah. And Yahweh Shah, you know, presents them to the Father. Okay? That's the that's 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 how it works, man. Okay, as we pray, our prayers, okay, go up into the heavens 
and their chariots, the angels, take them to Yahweh Shah, man, and, and they're, you know, then filtered through by Yahweh Shah to the Father. Okay? And there's a major cry against the so called white man, this devil, man. Okay? Against this American society, which is, you know, the mother of harlot, the source of wickedness in the earth, man. Okay? There's a they the Lord is hearing all those abiable balls. Okay? The scroll of Babylon. The Lord is hearing that, man. Okay? Along with everything else. Verse 17, it says, The prayer, all right, of the humble pierce through the clouds. Until it come nigh, he will not be comforted and will not depart till the Most High shall behold to judge righteously and execute judgment. And who's going to judge righteously on our behalf is Yahweh Shai. The Heavenly Father going to give the call. Okay, the command, and the scriptures say, you know, uh, you know, the power of Jacob will command deliverance. Okay, and it's gonna be through Yahweh Shai. So the elect are in the mindset of continually, perpetually, all right, putting curses on this place, man. Complaining, you know, even if we don't say anything, our spirit is groaning out in this, in this, in this vexation of a society, man. Okay. Reading on, read it again. It said, The prayer of the humble pitch of the clouds, and till they come nigh, he will not be comforted and will not depart till the Most High shall judge, all right, shall behold to judge righteously, righteously and execute judgment. For the Lord will not be slack, neither will the mighty be patient toward them till he have smitten in the son of the loins of the unmerciful, which is Esau, Edom. And repay vengeance to the heathen till he have taken away the multitude of the proud and broken the scepter, all right, the dominion of the unrighteous, man. You know, and that's our number one complaint is that this devil is in power, man. That Esau Edom is in rulership, man. You know, he's completely against righteousness. He's against our power. He's against the people, okay, of the Lord. And this man ultimately is against life. You know? But the Lord is going to end this man's dominion. <laughs> you know? And that's our number one concern in the in this ministry, man. The Lord come and finish in this place, man. Okay? We don't want to sit on no, you know, no goddamn thrones, man. You know? The, 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 you know, them thrones from the uh, at-home store. You know? We don't... Nah, man. We're not here to play them games. Like, we in some authority, man. And this nigga is still in power. All this wickedness that this man plans on bringing to the earth, man. And, and we, well, why would we have the audacity to sit on the throne, man? In the position that we in. Completely powerless, man. Okay? But our, but our power is going to judge on our behalf, man. And it's going to be in righteousness, man. Okay? So, let's go from there. Let's just get a few. And then we'll get that parable. You know, Lord, we'll end with that. This is um the book of Sirach, you know, because the Most High is a righteous judge, man. That's how we know that the, all the wickedness the devil is doing should increase our faith because we serve a righteous power, man. The Lord not going to let this rock, man. The Lord not going to let this devil bring this wicked enterprise to pass, man. He's going to get so far, and then the righteous judge is going to intervene, man. You know, he's going to deliver his righteous. Okay, which our righteousness is of Yahweh Shah, and it was predestined way above anything that we did. Okay, but the Lord is putting the spirit on us to hey, to be worthy, man. You know, through that day to day fight. This is uh, Sirach 3 and 17. It said, I said in my heart, the Most High shall judge the righteous and the wicked, for there is a time, for, for there is a time, all right, for every purpose and for every work okay so the lord is going to judge the righteous and the wicked that's why the yahweh shah is coming with great destruction and also great deliverance man okay he's going to be judging both parties all right esau edom you know who's that they're coming from either with die going from basra he's at the top of the list and then everyone is joined to this man if you take that sea hill that means that you are all right an associate of the wicked 
Okay, you agree with this beast system, which is completely anti-Messiah, and Yahweh Shai going to judge accordingly, man. You know, so Yahweh Shai, he's coming back. He's been sent back to judge the righteous and the wicked, man. Okay, and the righteous going to be delivered, changed, you know, delivered. Okay, and, and, and placed back in power. And Esau is going to be, you know, obliterated from power, man, and go into captivity. Okay, so reading on, let's get this in on Psalms 90, 96. All right, this Psalm 96 and 13 said, Before the Lord, it says, Before the Lord, for he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth, he shall judge the world with righteousness and the people with his truth. So the Lord is at hand to come, you know, and we're telling that. Hey, our power is finna come judge in righteousness, man. As it says, Yahweh Shah shall make war in what? In righteousness. Okay, and he's gonna judge according to truth, man. Not the deceptions, okay, of this world, because everything is based off of deception, trickery, lies, you know, corruption. Nah, Yahweh Shah coming to judge according to truth, man. Okay? That's why in the time of judgment, hey, we're gonna be faced with who we truly are, man. You know, and the, and the Lord going to judge, you know. So let's go here because that parable, you know, it's so similar to this one. You know, you have a shot, you know, pretty much expounding, you know, on what was being said in um, Sirach, the 35th chapter, man. Okay, so let's get that in Luke 18. All right, this is Luke 18 and 1. It says, and he spake a parable unto them to this end that men are always to pray. And not to faint. Okay. So we are to always pray. And not to faint man. And we just give up. You know we should come. Every day we should have a hope. In the Lord judging this place and righteousness man. We should. That should be one of our main hopes. Okay. Is we're prisoners of hope. Alright. Hey that should be one of the main things. That, 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 that we await. You know. Is this man. Rulership being ended. The wicked. Not having any more authority ever in the earth, man. Okay, verse 2, saying there was in a city a judge which feared not the Most High, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. Okay, and it says, And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not the Most High, nor regard man. All right. Yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, least by her continual coming she weary me. So the 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 thing is, okay, the theme of, of what we're reading is that the the consistent the consistency of this widow. Okay, her persistence. Alright, constantly, you know, a crying out for vengeance, man. Okay? And that's what we're doing in the spirit. We're constantly crying out for vengeance, man, against the wickedness of Esau Edom, man, and everything that he's done, everything that he's doing, and everything that he's even attempting to do, man. You know, we pray that the, that the Lord just bring heavy wrath on this devil, man, as it's written, though, and we know it's to come. It's just a thing of patience. That's why I say pray and never give up, man, Okay? Verse 6, it says, And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith, and shall not the Most High avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them. Okay? So the Lord is going to avenge his elect, you know, which is likened to that widow, you know, a vulnerable, you know, woman, you know, in society, man, showing you how helpless we are, man. Okay? It says, verse 8, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily, Nevertheless, when he when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on earth, man? And that's what we have to hold fast to till he come is that faith, man. Okay, in that deliverance, in you know righteous judgment. Okay, being executed, man. You know, cause it's gonna seem like the devil is just getting off. Okay, but we gotta hold on to whatever situation or circumstance we in, man. We gotta hold fast and know that the Lord is gonna judge this, man. Okay, he's, there's no way he's getting away, all right, and, and, and setting up, okay, a perpetual satanic kingdom in the earth, man. No way possible, man. 
Okay? So, Lord will, you brothers. All right? And you sisters edify to the next time I say shalom.